In this video, I want to start setting up the meshes, or let me rephrase that, physics for the mesh. So for example, I have these cubes here. We're going to go ahead and set it to simulate physics for both of them. So when they drop, they drop. However, when we pick them up, nothing exactly happens. So even though we are technically holding them, they are not actually being held and dragged along. So what we're going to do is go to item.h and .cpp. And we can also see, I think we have our, do we have a drop function? Or is that in the interact? So I think we do it. Yep, here's our drop item. So we detach the held item, set the rotation, as well as what we want to do is we want to pretty much set it to simulate physics. So basically, held item, and the, what is this type? A actor. So we want to create a public function inside of item, or better yet, in our interface that we can call. So it's going to be virtual void, enable physics. Then we want to have another one, virtual void, disable physics. And let's go ahead and create our virtual void, enable physics, override it, and create the implementation. So, let's see, what we want to do is we can create an on rep to pretty much enable the physics, or we, actually I don't know if we can just call it, I think we have to call it on the client. I don't think we can just set it only on the server to enable the physics, but regardless, what we're going to do is, let's see, what do we call it? Item mesh, mesh component, set virtual physics, set simulate physics, we're going to pass in true. So that's what we're going to use as our test. So what we're going to do is held item, we need to get the interface, so we can do that by simply casting. So if, what was it? No, I interactive. So I interactable interface. Interface equals cast to I interactable interface from that item. What we do is interface enable physics. Let's give this a try, and we'll see what happens, because this should be on the server, and we can test and see if the replication carries down to the clients. I do not think it will, but we will see. Let's go to try first. We want to disable physics. Pick it up, drop it. Okay, that's working. Try with the client. Pick it up and drop it. Okay, so that does replicate down. Good. So now we want to make it so when we pick it up, it also, um, what do you call it? When we pick it up, we want to make sure we disable the physics on it. So in item.h, what we can do, go enable physics, we want to have virtual void, disable physics. and mesh component, simulate physics, we just pass in false. Okay, so what we want to do is, let's see, I'm trying to think. We almost don't need this because we are casting inside of things like our key and door. However, that option we can just leave there. If the function does not have it, it's not a big deal. Because obviously, if we look at back at the interface, nothing is actually running, so that's just fine. So when we go to interact, let's actually look in the item.cpp, go through, attach to component. Okay, so where we go through and we attach, 
before we attach, we want to disable physics. We can just call it directly. And we are pretty much, we should be good to go. Let's see. Just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the editor. Okay. Let's try this again. So, pick it up, drop it, has physics, pick this one up, drop it, physics, so we can re-pick up objects that have physics, and let's see if this works on the client too, which it does not. So, let's actually double check here. So for some reason, now you have physics. My guess is the object was just far off enough. So like I have zero clue where that one even went. Or it was throwing a fit when we try to pick it up. That makes me curious. I can move the position of it. That is down right below. I'm trying to get the positions of it fairly off. Let's try it that way. Nope, and I just realized the movement itself is actually replicated, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay, so. We have these both. They can simulate physics by default. For some reason, they both. So my guess is they are not replicating their location when they initially drop, which is a bit of a problem. But regardless, it should still be okay. Let's pick up a cube. Place it in there, pick up another one, place it in there, it's already open. And we have the, this now set up too. We can drop, that wasn't even close. Our item's back. I can take it if I want to for some odd reason, drop it right back in the drawer, and that fell right through the drawer. So that makes me have the question. We may have forgot to have physics, or a physics asset on the bottom of the drawer. So let's look at it. We have them on the walls. We do have one, wait, no, we do not have anything on the very bottom. So if we want to have that ability, we want to have one more of these put on the very bottom. So what we can do is go ahead and add a shape, add one more box. Scale it out. Let's actually go to top view. Scale it wide. Now let's go to the side and scale it down. So it should look at perspective again. Make sure this is not blocking it, which it not quite tilt. Seems like it is ever so slightly. We'll move it down just a hair. Trying to make it so I can. That's the wrong axis. Okay. I'm going to go to the side view one more time. Just can't click it.
move it just right barely to where it's over top of the top layer. Okay, now let's give this a try. That, where's the, uh, okay, so it's right about here. Pick that up. And drop it. And now it falls right back in the drawer. So let's see if we have any other problems. So we close it. Open it back up. And it's still right there. So that is good. Our item interaction is starting to come out quite well, I'd say, actually. So that's going to be all for this video. Let me print that.